Hey everyone, Jonathan Silva here from Pragmatic Works. For this video, what I'd like to do is jump into Power Automate and look at how I can select an item in SharePoint and go ahead and send an email or a Teams message to one, two, or 20 people all by clicking on one item and then going ahead and running my workflow from there. So here we are in Power Automate and this is where I have my flow started. You can see here that my trigger is a manual trigger and it's running on a selected item in SharePoint. And the item in SharePoint is off of this list. I have the ability to come in here with my list, select a value, and if I wanna choose one of these, I wanna come into Automate and then run a workflow from here so I can send this inside of either Teams or say Outlook or email. Now, one of the big caveats of trying to do this from SharePoint is the flow I build here in Power Automate must be inside of the company's default environment. So if you're used to building workflows in a developer environment or even your personal and development environment, please make sure this is only going to work if you're inside of that company default. So I've just renamed my demo here to demo default for that environment. Then what we need to do is go ahead and add in a few inputs here inside of our trigger so we know exactly what we're gonna be asking when we wanna send out this Teams message or this email. So for the first input that I'm gonna add in here is just click on this button and I'm gonna choose email, right? It's just gonna ask for an email address. It's gonna ask me for the email. I'm actually gonna come in here and change it email to send to just because sometimes it can get a little confusing when working with emails here. I wanna make it a little bit obvious for my user, for myself, that I'm gonna you know, add the email to send this to. I'm also gonna come on in, in here, add another input, and it's gonna be a yes, no. This is gonna be a yes, no for us to either send into Teams, and if I add another one, into email. Because what I'd like to do, is be able to have my user or myself make a decision, yes, send it to Teams or no, send it to Teams. Yes, send it via email or no, send it via email. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And finally, there's just one last one I like to put in here. I'm gonna put in some comments. So my last input here is a text and there we are for comments. So it's gonna allow me to you know, put a tag in there or say something within the message or the email that I'm going to send. Now, what I'm gonna do is add in my next action. And one of the actions we need here is just because we have a selected item does not mean we actually have access to the dynamic content the item is supposed to create. So in this case, what we need to do is actually go physically get the item from SharePoint. So I need to add a new step here, and I'm gonna choose get item. Again, the reason why we're doing this is because the for a selected item trigger does not generate all of the dynamic content we need about all the different columns we have here within our SharePoint list, no matter how many columns we have. So in here, if I choose get item, it's gonna ask me to go to my site address, my list, and then I can pop in the unique identifier for that selected item. All right, there is my dynamic content for my file identifier. I'm gonna pop that in there. And now that provides us all of the dynamic content we need to be able to work for the next stage. And the next stage here is we need to test from our trigger here, do we wanna either send an email or team? So we're actually gonna add in two different conditions here. One to check if it's an email, another to check if it's teams. So my first one here, new step. I'm gonna go ahead and add my condition control. Here in my choose a value, I'm gonna go ahead and go find the dynamic content from our input here. It should be all the way at the very bottom. Here we are. You can see here, this is where for a selected item, that's the question I asked. That's why, again, I wanna make sure I made these unique because it could be a little confusing here. User email, username, that's why I renamed it here. Email is equal to True. Now I can make this an expression or just simply write it in here. Pass is just fine either way. So we can just leave it like that. Then if it's true that we said yes to email, let's go ahead and send our email. So I'm gonna come in here and choose send an email. We'll go ahead and build out with the Office 365 Outlook connector, send an email V2. And in this case, 
I'm going to go ahead and send it to whichever person I suggested to, or whatever person I typed in here in this for a selected item for my trigger. So I'm going to add dynamic content and email to send to. Again, you see why I put this and change it just straight from email because it makes it just a little bit easier for me here within the context. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in here subject. Uh, let's see. There is a new action I need you to complete, right? Just some, some type of item here coming from my list. Here's an upcoming project. Maybe I'll put new project I need you to complete, right? That would make a lot more sense in here, wouldn't it? All right, there we go. And we could say this message was sent by, I could just put in here, I'm using like a dummy account here, but that's okay. I can come back in here and say who it was sent by. And that is gonna be in here as we pull in within our dynamic content, okay? This is gonna be the username. Now I can't really see it in here, right? You could sort of select it item. So if I just search for it, there it is, username. That's gonna be me, right? That's the user that is actually kicking off this workflow or clicking on the button there to initiate the process, okay? And then I could say the project, and I'll put my title in here because that's my primary column for the project name. There's title, okay, was assigned to you with the due date of, and I'll put in here our due date. So we can have our due date. Now for our due date, I probably gonna wanna format this. Take a look at another video I have here. I've added it into the description on how to format date time. I'm gonna go just do that real quick here with our expression. We're gonna do our format date time. I have a couple different videos on how to explain how to go through that. So I'm gonna go pretty quickly here. I'm gonna go format my date. Let me make sure I grab that. Oops, I went really fast for my get item. There it is, my due date. I'm gonna go all the way to the end here, comma, single quote. I'll make this. Uh, just a quick one, month, day, year, just like that. I'll format it like that, okay? And then I'll also um, add another piece here. The, let's make sure I come back here, the technology, I don't wanna use the wrong words there. Technology used for this project should be, and then I'll just pass that in here technology, right? We're going to choose technology value because it is a choice column. So we're going to choose that technology value right there. Finally, I can put in additional comments just like this. And that should be the last thing I need here. There's our first selected item comments, All right? Again, anything that's coming from the input here is from a for a selected item. We're going to be really careful to choose from that selection here, that field here, when we pass in the dynamic content. So there we have it, send an email. All right, so that works. Now what we can do, or at least that's built out so far, now what we can do is add another action to test, should we be sending this into Teams? So we're gonna have a nested condition inside here. So I'm gonna add another condition, and this one, I'm gonna just quickly rename this as well so I can condition send to Teams, all right? Uh, then I can come on in here and go all the way down. I believe it's at the very bottom. There it is. Our team's input question there is equal to true. If it is equal to true, all right, what I want to do is I want to post a message in teams. So I'm going to add an action here and I'll go post message in teams for that there. Post message in a chatter channel. There we are. And it's making my connection. I just made this tenant, so it might be going a little slow. Here we are. And I can post this as a flow bot. I can post it as the user. Flow bot works just nicely because I can actually post this in a chat with the flow bot and it makes it really easy because what I can do is add in my recipient and I can add in just all of this body in here too. So I could just do this, copy, control C, just highlight everything here, control C, control V into the message, which makes it super easy to be able to copy and paste all that dynamic content. Now, the part here that is gonna be a little bit different, that's not gonna necessarily work here, is the recipient here inside of Teams. One of the pieces that we have to think about when working with Teams is we can only send one message at a time to one individual user. 
with emails, we can send it to a bunch of people. That works just fine for us. But when we send it as a Teams message, it's really gonna be tough. So what we need to do is actually split apart our Teams messages and be able to have individually sent messages to each person. So technically what I need to do is loop over the list of emails and send this to one person at a time. The one action we have in here with Power Automate to loop is apply to each. So I'm gonna add that after our message here and just go ahead and drag my post and message and chat or channel inside of that. So I'll search for apply to each, which is gonna build in this for each loop. Sometimes you will see that in Power Automate, renamed to for each, especially if you're using that new Copilot designer. Now that new Copilot designer, by the way, does not show up with this specific trigger. That's why you can see my node designer is blocked out up here at the top. All right, so now I can drag my post and message in here. All right, and what I need to do is in my select and output here, we need to split apart the email string that is created within our trigger. So we need to come in here and use an expression. And I'm gonna use the split expression. What split is gonna let me do is take my email string that I have, split them apart with a delimiter. So the email string I wanna split here with my dynamic content is gonna be all the way back here. Let's make sure I can grab it. Did I go too far? Let's see if I can get it. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, it's not letting me. So we might need to use a little bit of extra in here. So let me just choose a quick action. Watch this, a little bit of compose to be able to just pass it in. It's a little bit easier for me to just go ahead and point to it here. So this is gonna be uh, email. If I search for it, there, there's our email to send to. Now I can just copy this out. Again, sometimes with certain actions, you're not gonna be able to get that dynamic content. So a compose is a great way of generating that input for us so we can just use it somewhere else. So here we are. Now, if I put in my expression, my split, open parentheses, I just paste it in, look at that. There's the email that I've been looking for. Get rid of the curly bracket in the at sign, get rid of the curly bracket there. And now what we can do is go ahead and add in our delimiter. Okay, so if I put a comma, it'll let me put in my separator or my delimiter, single quote, inside of the single quotes, I can just designate that semicolon. So now what it's gonna do is split apart our email addresses. If I have two, it's gonna now loop over each email. So it's gonna send out one message based upon each email. So I can use this as my content to loop over. Every single email address gets a different Teams message. That's the apply to each logic there. So now if we put that in here, I can split that and in my post and message and chat or channel, the recipient, as we work through here, Okay, is it's going to allow us to pass that in for each current item all the way at the very bottom. You'll see it does say current item, current email address. That's what we're looping over. That's who the recipient's going to be. So I can pass it in just like this. All right, so that's the way we're going to be able to do this each time. Now, we may need to do that for our send an email, right? That might be another thing here that's going to have to, we're going to have to test out here. But for right now, let's go ahead and work with what we have. I can remove this compose. We just added this in just to get access to that dynamic content. And we can come on in here, save and test this flow. All right, here we are again. You can see we don't have our AI powered editing here. That's because of our trigger. That's totally okay. Let's hit test and see if this works. Now, when you see that, oh, it can't be triggered for testing here because again, it's for a selected item. So let's go to SharePoint here select an item and choose what to do. Uh, let's go ahead and use our Canvas app here. It's the one that's already selected. We might need to refresh this page just in case the uh, workflow doesn't appear just yet. So let's just do that real fast. Come on in here and select our item. Come over to Automate. Oh, there you see it. Send an email and Teams message for the selected SharePoint item. When we do that, we are gonna be asked because it was built with Power Automate and our triggers associated with SharePoint, we're gonna be asked for those inputs here. So make sure I'm signed in. All right, that's good to go. Now, who do I wanna send this to? All right, I'm gonna send it to two people, see if it works. I'm gonna send it to Matt and I'm gonna send it to Nate. Let's see if we can get them to go in. I'm gonna send it to both Teams 
and email and I can say, please work together to complete this app. I know you both will crush, oops, get that out of the way, crush it. All right, there we are. And we can hit run flow. And let's take a look and see if that works. So I'm gonna go back to Power Automate here and we can go back once more because we can't test in here. We should be able to see if that actually goes through. Back up. Let's see if our flow runs have gone through. Got it. Oh, look at that. It took only nine seconds. It succeeded 14 seconds ago. It My flow has run successfully, which means if I go in and log in as Matt, here we are. Here's Matt. There's my team's message. There's the team's message sent from that dummy account lab admin. Here's our project. That's the date. We can see my additional comments there. Oh, there's my email to Matt as well. Same thing. That works great. Oh, and let's take a look. Did Nate get it? Let's see. Oh, here he did. You know he did. There's that message into Nate coming from our workflows here. We also have our email, the exact same email again. Now this one was sent to them as a group here. You can see to Matt and to Nate as one string. Email can handle that, right? Teams messages cannot. So that is the big difference that we have to think about when we work in here is how do we want to be able to send these messages? If it's email, go ahead and just populate as many email addresses in there as you want. If it's Teams, a little bit different. We need to go ahead and use that split expression split apart this array or this list of emails that we're essentially creating, loop over them, and for each email address, go ahead and send in a different Teams message. Well, if you like this demonstration and want to learn more about Power Automate, Power Apps, Power BI, go ahead and drop a like below. Hit that subscribe button to get more content from myself and all of us here at Pragmatic Works.